Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Today, it's time to take a look at the GPU market once more to give our monthly update on everything that is happening. As can be, well, fairly typical for the first few months of the year under relatively normal market conditions, March hasn't been an especially exciting month for graphics cards, but there has been a few small price moves here and there, plus of course the impending launch of the GeForce RTX 4070 that we're expecting to take place in April, at least based on current rumors. But before we take a look at the latest updates, Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Hetzner, a reliable hosting partner with a passion for IT. Hetzner runs their own high-tech data centers in Helsinki, Finland, as well as German cities Nuremberg and Falkenstein. By merging its capabilities in cutting-edge technology, attractive pricing, and skilled customer service, Hetzner has also increased its market share both inside and outside of Europe. As one of the leading hosting providers, Hetzner is still innovating when it comes to new products, offering a variety of services. Outstanding self-developed, high-tech dedicated servers such as their recent launch of the EX44 featuring Intel's Core i5-13500 and EX101 using Intel's Core i9-13900. So for affordable approaches to modernizing your IT infrastructure, please check the link in the video description. The graphics card market overall remains relatively weak at the moment with lackluster demand for the current lineup. This is largely due to AMD and Nvidia focusing on the high end with their latest releases at price points well out of reach for most customers. Meanwhile, the mid-range and mainstream markets haven't changed significantly in many months. There's really very little new there to get excited about. I mean, you're not exactly going to rush out and buy an RTX 3050 or RX 6600 at this point, given pricing for those cards is the same now as it was six months ago, or roughly speaking. With weak demand, there has been some good and bad moves in terms of pricing. The good news is that price inflation is mostly a thing of the past, with pretty abundant stock of new generation cards at or near the MSRP. This includes the RTX 4090 dropping to $1,650 US, down from $1,800 last month, and completely unavailable in January. A healthy situation for the fastest GPU you can get, with no real signs of a stock shortage based on what we've seen and also what we've heard. This gives the 4090 a price tag just 3% higher than MSRP, which most high-end buyers I think will accept. Meanwhile, the RTX 4080 continues to be available in huge numbers at its $1,200 MSRP. Right now, there are four models on Newegg at that price, with another five within $50. The RTX 4070 Ti is also available as low as $815, as it continues to sit just above its MSRP. On the AMD side, it's good to see the RX 7900 XTX return to its MSRP of $1,000, so if you wanted AMD's flagship card, it is now readily available at the MSRP in the US. The big positive is the continual price drops for the RX 7900 XT, which debuted at a ridiculous $900 US back in December. Now that card sits $100 below MSRP just three months after launch at $800, which certainly would have been a more appropriate price to go with from the beginning. And in our latest video where we compared the 7900 XT and 4070 Ti across more than 50 games, this price drop has evened up that battle considerably. $900 was just never going to work long term. Also on the market right now and should be considered current generation products are Intel's Arc GPUs, although there hasn't been any significant adjustments to price compared to last month on Newegg. The A750 here is pretty compelling at $250 US, and our latest video showing Intel's driver improvements is well worth a watch if you're interested in a mainstream GPU. The bad news is that for a lot of these cards, MSRP pricing isn't exciting and isn't going to shift these models any more than a trickle. Most of these models, you'd have to say, are priced badly and require further price corrections. The RTX 4090 being a flagship model you could probably justify being priced at $1,600, which isn't that ludicrous given we've seen the fastest cards in each series priced well over $1,000 since Pascal and the GeForce Titan X. But the other models, they are less enticing. When the Radeon RX 7900 XTX offers the same performance as the RTX 4080 on average, but does so at $200 less, there is no way the RTX 4080 should remain at $1200, doubly so when you see the dismal sales figures for this card. The RTX 4080 should be $1000 US, where it would be the clear buy over the 7900 XTX due to Nvidia's stronger feature set, which in turn would likely force the 7900 XTX down in price slightly. Right now, the 7900 XTX doesn't look too bad at $1,000, but also isn't overly exciting given that's still a high price tag. 
It's really in the battle of the 4070 Ti and 7900 XT where these cards are hard to swallow because they just don't offer strong value compared to previous generation models. The 7900 XT looks better at $800 than $900, but is only slightly better value than the 7900 XTX and previous generation cards like the 6800 XT. I 100% agree with Steve when he said recently this card should be priced at $700 as should the RTX 4070 Ti, which at today's retail prices isn't good value relative to previous generation cards like the RTX 3080. At $700, the 4070 Ti would be offering 18% more performance at 4K than the RTX 3080 for the same MSRP. Not an earth-shattering improvement, but certainly it would be much more compelling. This brings us to the upcoming situation with models such as the GeForce RTX 4070, lower tier RTX 40 series cards, and of course whatever AMD is planning with their Navi 32 and 33 dies. Recent rumours have suggested the RTX 4070 will debut at a $750 MSRP, with some board partner cards priced up around $800 US. We don't have any firm idea on the pricing for this model right now, as Nvidia tends not to confirm this until mere days before the launch, as was the case with the 4070 Ti. They may be targeting $750 for all I know, but they won't have the final price confirmed until several weeks from now, and really that's what we care about. What I am confident of is that the RTX 4070 would be dead on arrival at $750 US. If the 4070 Ti should be priced at $700 US to be a compelling buy, there's absolutely no way a 4070 at $750 would be a good product, as it will definitely be slower than the Ti model. At $700, the 4070 would also be a fail, and that's without seeing any performance figures for that card, as again, that's where the 4070 Ti should be right now. Where the 4070 should be priced will come down to its performance. We're expecting this model to perform somewhere in the vicinity of the RTX 3080 10GB, so around 15-20% to slower than the 4070 Ti. The absolute bare minimum would then be a 15-20% to cheaper price than the 4070 Ti, which would be around $650 US going on the 4070 Ti's current MSRP. Unless the 4070 was somehow only a few percent slower than the 4070 Ti, which is unlikely to happen, a $750 MSRP would be pretty dumb, and that's why I'm not inclined to believe that will be the final price. Though, I am interested to see what you guys think the MSRP will be in the comments below. However, we've also said that the 4070 Ti should be $700, so extrapolating that out to where we think the RTX 4070 should perform, and we get an MSRP of between $550 and $600 US. That would be a pretty good price for that sort of product. It would be over 20% faster than an RTX 3070 Ti for the same sort of price. And if Nvidia really wants to redeem this generation, as we've said in a video back in January, RTX 3080 performance for $500 would be killer, though unexpected and unlikely to happen. Realistically, we expect the next $500 GPU to be only slightly faster than the RTX 3070, going on how terrible pricing has been for this generation. It really does depend on performance though, as we said, so this is just us working through some examples based on speculated performance. If it is faster, Nvidia could get away with the higher price. If it's slower, of course, it needs to be cheaper. This also applies to any future GPUs from AMD. If they manage to get Navi 32 performance up around the RTX 3080 10GB, then it too should be priced around $550 to $600 to be acceptable value. I personally think AMD should price their cards a bit cheaper to entice more sales and market share. A $500 MSRP would certainly send waves through the enthusiast market, but AMD's Radeon division seems to botch these things lately, as seen by the 7900 XT launch price. It's crucial that a GPU is priced well at launch to avoid terrible reviews and a poor early perception, which has a lasting impact as these reviews will be viewed throughout the lifespan of the card. Not every outlet is going to re-review a card when the price is adjusted, so you'd think getting things off to a good positive start would be the winning strategy, but I guess not over at AMD. In any case, it'll be very interesting to see where these upcoming graphics cards are priced and whether AMD and Nvidia are feeling the pressure of a slow market. There's definitely some demand sitting there waiting to be activated, but the current pricing structure just isn't doing it. 
As for RTX 30 series cards in the new market, there isn't a whole lot to say here as pricing is similar to previous months. The big mover in March is the RTX 3070 dropping back to $500 US, its MSRP, which it last hit in September of last year. Pricing has fluctuated around a bit, though since July those fluctuations have largely sat between $500 and $570 US. I suspect Nvidia will soon make a push to clear RTX 3070s and 3070 Ti's from the market to make room for the RTX 4070 and other mid-tier cards. AMD GPUs from the RX 6000 series continue to get slightly cheaper, though this isn't the case for all models. The RX 6950 XT dropped to a new low of $680, down $20 from last month. We also saw the return of historic low pricing for cards like the RX 6650 XT, which hit $260 as it did in November. But as with Nvidia cards, most models have been merely fluctuating in price for the last six months, indicating a relatively stable market. As for the used market, there's not a lot to say here, which has been the case for several months. With consistent pricing on the new market, there has been no pressure to reduce used prices, so it's also quite a stable market there. For example, Nvidia 30 series cards drop by just 2% on average month on month, and most cards are remaining at around a 25% discount in the lower parts of the product stack, comparing used to new. Same story for AMD GPUs in the 6000 series. For some of these models, it still makes basically no sense to buy used over new. For example, you're getting just a 12% discount on average buying a used RX 6800 over buying one new, which just isn't worth it when you're not getting a warranty. Really, I'd be wanting to see a 20% discount to justify going used, and for AMD cards, that really isn't the case. So for buyers here, I'd just probably buy a new model. The RTX 20 series, no change here to pricing. The GTX 16 series is slightly cheaper, but effectively the same, still offering the lineup below $140 US. And then the RX 5000 series from AMD has been fluctuating a bit, but still roughly the same, with some of these products being quite good value, all things considered. And there's a lot of RX 5700 XT sales volume still, which I suspect are X mining cards. Overall, the GPU market continues to be pretty slow and likely will remain that way until Nvidia and AMD finish launching their product stack. The amount of people still interested in spending over $800 US on a new graphics card has dwindled massively, so it very much is time to move on to newer price points with new launches. Until gamers see something below $500 US that's worth buying, I wouldn't be expecting a huge flood of sales in 2023. With that said, it is good to see AMD correct course with the RX 7900 XT and drop pricing to $800 US, and further increases to MSRP or near MSRP stock for cards like the 7900 XDX and RTX 4090. We are very much in a normal to weak market right now, there is no need to spend money on a price inflated GPU, supply is in good nick and there's good options at the MSRP. At this point, with the impending launch of the RTX 4070, I'd hold off buying a graphics card in the $500 to $800 range for now, as you may as well wait and see what Nvidia has to offer there. Even if it's not particularly compelling from a price to performance standpoint, at least you have all the information in front of you and can make a solid decision. With that said, I highly doubt the 4070 will launch at $750, as it would just be dead on arrival at that price, so we'll see what happens next month. The used market is also an option, though I'd avoid AMD RX 6000 cards at the moment as they are overpriced on eBay and you may as well buy a new card instead with the full warranty, especially as prices fluctuate and fall slightly at times. Other segments appear to be priced appropriately, continuing what we've seen over the last six months, so I wouldn't be expecting any significant discounts from here, and if you're interested in a product that's at a good price, well, may as well buy it because, yeah, not expecting too much difference in the next couple of updates. So anyway, that's it for this month's GPU pricing update for March. We are, as I said, expecting the 4070 to launch next month, so we'll check out how pricing goes there and whether it launches at a reasonable price and whether it's actually priced at the MSRP on the market. So yeah, it should be more interesting things to talk about next month. As always, if you do appreciate our independent testing and analysis, please do consider supporting us through our Patreon and Float Plan accounts. Links to those are in the description below, and you'll gain access to some cool benefits and perks, things like behind-the-scenes videos, monthly live stream which should be coming up pretty soon so now's a good time to jump in if you're interested in that and also what else we've got our discord community as well so yeah that's it for this one thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next one <laughs>